It's been about six months since Epic Games announced that they would be opening their platform to crypto games. In this big-brained move to beat Steam, which banned all crypto and NFT games, Epic has inadvertently encouraged some of the most uninspired, zero-effort garbage to flood their platform. But now that we've had a few months for the dust to settle, how are things looking? Have the fabled good crypto games finally arrived on the platform? Am I about to be proven as wrong as the bag holders in my comment section think I am? In an attempt to answer these ever-present questions, I chose three more crypto games games on the Epic Game Store to see how they compare to non-crypto games. Wish me luck. Blanco's Block Party is an immersive social party game where you play with and against friends in racing, vibe collection, shooting, and brawl game modes. Vibe collection? What's that? The game is developed by the Web3-focused game studio Mythical Games. After raising more than $150 million in venture capital funding at a valuation of $1.25 billion, fans have long awaited the release of the company's flagship title, Blanco's Block Party. Who are these fans exactly? I'm not quite sure. I've never heard of Blanco's before either, but it looks like they're some NFT version of Funko Pops. We've taken real-life, resource-wasting, consumerist garbage and upgraded to digital, resource-wasting, consumerist garbage. Except Blanco's don't even have the licensed characters that Funko Pops have, so they're even less appealing to the general population. Mythical Games has developed one other product, a mobile game called NFL Rivals, which, according to their App Store reviews, is a pay-to-win football game. You can buy and sell players for the game on its NFT marketplace. However, you might need to actually play in the NFL to have a salary that justifies spending $1.6 million on a level 9 4-star Jalen Hurts player card. Anyway, we're here to talk about Blancos. I'm not sure if this game is fully released or if it's in some sort of beta or early access state, since it doesn't say so anywhere on the game's store page. But considering that it's been in development since 2019, I'd hope that this is the full version. Uh, what else is there to see here? Let's see, we got the usual warning, this is a blockchain game notice, as well as some information about how Blankos is using the blockchain. Here's a question from the FAQ. What chain does this product use? Is the chain proof of work or proof of stake? Blanco's Block Party is built on a private, permissioned blockchain based on the EOSIO infrastructure that uses a proof of authority consensus model that is more environmentally friendly and sustainable than the proof of work model. They mention here that they decided to use a blockchain because it allows players greater control and ownership over their items. However, it seems like they immediately counter that point because the developers have full control over the entire blockchain the items are on anyway, so it's not decentralized in the slightest. But that's besides the point. We already know that nobody cares nor wants a decentralized game. We just want to play something fun. Blanco's is a do-it-yourself game, which is business speak for let the players do all the work for you. This allows the developers to focus their effort on the monetization aspects of the platform while relying on players to develop the content. It's not too different than something like Roblox, but as we saw with The Sandbox, a platform like this is essentially non-existent without a dedicated player base. Regardless, that's enough backstory. Let's play the game. The game comes with its own launcher, which can be launched via the Epic Games launcher. A launcher inside of a launcher. There's something kind of off-putting about this lowercase play button, and in fact, the lowercase text is a recurring theme with this game. Okay, so welcome to Blanco's Block Party. You start off in a little hub world called The Desk, where you can dress up your Blanco with NFT cosmetics, which can be purchased on the marketplace. Cool. I don't care. I just want to play the game, so I click play and get placed into an empty lobby. I wait a few minutes, and nobody joins the game. That's weird. Is there nobody playing this game? After taking a brief look through all the available game modes, I quickly learned that this game has not only been abandoned by the player base, but by the developers as well. There are literally zero players online on Blanco's Block Party, which makes the game essentially unplayable since it's an online-only multiplayer party game. Time to recruit some friends of my own, then. We got a lot of people. Okay, let's go. What's up, guys? We all have the same skin because we're all too poor to buy an NFT, but it's okay. Can I emote? Let's go! After populating the servers with the Jawn army, we managed to get a few rounds of Blankos in. Unfortunately for us, the game is not good. There are a variety of game modes, which I think are all player created, but I'm sure that there's some developer made game modes. The most popular ones are obstacle courses, and they're all terrible. 
The game has an atrocious control scheme and game feel, making basic movement a chore. Instead of double jump, they wanted to be creative and added this hover jump where you just walk in the air for a few seconds when you hold jump midair. But it's pointless and you'll never use it. Another game mode we played was the aforementioned Vibe Collection mode. Walk around a lazily assembled level full of copy pasted assets and pick up lightning bolts. They really put that $150 million to good use. The last game mode we played before collectively deciding that this was the most boring game of all time was a deathmatch game mode, where you're on a map filled with explosives and angled surfaces. This level design makes it pretty much impossible to control your character, and the gameplay consists of just trying to avoid mines which will either instantly kill you or throw you off the map. This is what you get when you outsource your game development to the players, especially when those players are all crypto bros. Trash in, trash out. There isn't really anything else to see in Blanco's Block Party. There's a hub world, but there's nothing to do here, especially because if I hadn't filled the servers myself, the game would be completely empty. I can't customize my Blanco since I didn't want to pay for any items, but they do have Amazon Prime gaming rewards, which I found pretty surprising. As expected, there's also a battle pass, but it seems to be broken since the progress bar renders off screen. Nice. In addition to the battle pass being broken, the chat feature doesn't work at all. It says, hold enter to chat, but when doing so, nothing happens. A social game without a functioning chat feature? Oh boy, sign me up. I decided to head over to the game's Discord server to learn a bit more about the game, and what I found was immensely depressing. Instead of the usual lively community of crypto nerds trying to pump their bags, I instead encountered the internet equivalent of group therapy. Looks like the developers went to go buy milk and have yet to come back because they said that the game's going to be making a shift to mobile and then offered no further explanation or timeline. This has left the dozens of investors still remaining as completely hopeless individuals, spending their days in the Discord complaining about how there are no updates to the game or how they've lost all the money they invested. One player says, I also have invested quite a lot of money in this project, probably enough to buy a really nice car, but I look at the money as used on a journey, as if it turns out to make a profit in the end, the journey was well worth it. If not, it was an adventure worth being a part of anyway, considering the people I've met and the things I've been a part of, and all lessons learned. Yeah man, you can keep telling yourself that, or you could just admit that you got fleeced by yet another crypto project. But the next one will definitely make it big, so I need you to keep gambling. After all, 99% of gamblers quit just one spin before they've won a trillion dollars. Gamble, 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 gamble. Other players complain about the fact that you can't even sell the NFTs that you bought in-game if you live in certain countries, which is just fantastic to hear. The blockchain they're using is so awesome and private that you can't even look at the transactions or have your own wallet. You just pay them in your local currency and they give you an NFT. So there's really not a lot of proof that these items are even NFTs in the first place. There's allegedly a way to take your NFTs onto the Ethereum blockchain, but there would be absolutely no reason to do this, as not only would it cost a lot of money and fees, but the only thing you can do with your NFTs is trade them to someone else. I don't think most people would want these dumpo drops even if you paid them to take them off your hands. Just like their real life counterparts of Funko Pops, Chunko's Block Party is destined to a permanent home and a landfill. Nobody will remember this game, and it has died almost as soon as it was born. The game had been in development since 2019, which is baffling since there are so many obvious problems with the game. It's clear that the priority here was just getting something out the door at any cost, and as usual, this has resulted in a staggering lack of appeal. Remember kids, if a strange man comes up to you and asks you if you want to play with his Blancos, kick him between the legs and run away as fast as you can. A new free-to-play gaming project using pioneering technologies to deliver an elevated gaming experience through the use of blockchain, motion capture, and I can't find the rest of this tech snippet, but I'm sure it's as equally buzzworded as the first half is. My Pet Hooligan is yet another Unreal Engine third-person shooter, except this time with edgy rabbits. Even for an NFT game, this is exceedingly unoriginal. The game was released just two weeks ago on the Epic Game Store, and when it released, well, let's just say it broke the internet. Hula fans from around the world rallied to Holy Land City to wage war against the evil Meta Zuckbots, garnering player counts rivaling that of Baldur's Gate 3. Just kidding, none of this happened. The only way that you would have ever heard of this game is either by being heavily involved in the grifter hellhole that is crypto Twitter, or through watching this video. Or perhaps you saw the game featured on IGN's website, where curious readers were led to the game's stellar introductory trailer.
Well, what are we waiting for? Time to hula game. I assumed that for this game there would be also no players online, so once again I called upon the mighty John Army to bless this game with a player base. Despite releasing two weeks ago as of recording this, my pet hooligan has four players online at 9pm on a Friday night. The developers were probably freaking out and getting notifications that the games reached an all-time peak of 10 players while I was playing it on stream. The game is your run-of-the-mill Unreal Engine third-person shooter. Same as Curaverse, or Alluvium, or the Cyber Crew game, among countless others. The developers clearly put a lot of love and attention into the character designs, but that might be all for naught when we see how the actual game plays. Oh, this is so bad. <laughs> oh my god. Terribly. The only map in the game is massive, and it appears that developers wouldn't know what optimization was if it hit them square in the jaw. 60 FPS? No way, that's too much. 40? Mmm, looking better. 29? Now that's more like it. My GPU is a 7900 XTX, and as you can tell by the footage, my PC struggled to run this game. Others reported even worse performance on a 3080 Ti, so it's not even an AMD versus Nvidia problem, it just sucks. So right away, this game is extremely unappealing to play, as the poor performance makes this feel more like a student project than something that should have Amazon Prime drops. And yes, it has Amazon Prime drops. Since there's so few players online, we're relegated to playing on whichever server has a non-zero player count. Surprisingly, the four people playing this game are pretty high level, and they're all playing on this giant map on the game mode Hangout. There are no teams, and there doesn't appear to be a score or objective, you just wander around the massive level shooting people. There's also a complete lack of any communication features, neither text nor voice chat. So much for this being a hangout, right? We tried one other server on the game mode Coinpocalypse. This was a lot more fun, as portions of the map were walled off to keep the players in the same area. However, the piss poor performance and overall uninteresting premise didn't keep any of us engaged. I have no idea how the random dude who joined our game managed to play this game enough to reach level 36. Either a big time bag holder, or a developer, perhaps. There are a few things about My Pet Hooligan that I feel the developers deserve being commended for, surprisingly. All of us playing the game together agreed that the rabbit characters were horrendous looking, especially with the awful run cycle animation. Despite this, the falling animation is actually really good, and the way that your rabbit hits the ground is kind of like a Looney Tunes character, and it's really fitting. Additionally, the world designs actually half decent, and the cartoony but grimy aesthetic fits the vibe of the word hooligan. And lastly, the fire extinguisher was funny. I can fire extinguish you. So, what's next for My Pet Hooligan? I found this slide deck for potential licensees of the My Pet Hooligan IP, and it looks like they've got big dreams. According to this introductory slide, My Pet Hooligan is a AAA free-to-play role-playing game, but in the paragraph below, it says that they're made by an independent gaming studio. So, which is it? Apparently, they're also making My Pet Hooligan the movie, and in a few months, they're going to release My Pet Hooligan the game on consoles. They note that their demographics are 75% male and have a high disposable income. Makes sense, considering the average Hooligan NFT sells for over $850. Of course, you're not required to buy an NFT to play the game, which would make me think that the game would have more than four players online at peak hours. Regardless of all the effort that the team spent on creating and marketing the game, it unfortunately seems to have died on arrival. It's a tough market though. There are dozens of games on the Epic Game Store that are just Lyra asset flips. My Pet Hooligan is basically the exact same game as all these other ones, except with some of the worst performance I've ever witnessed in a video game. In case you don't know what I'm talking about when I say that it's a Lyra asset flip, this is what I'm referring to. This is Lyra. It's a starter game that comes with Unreal Engine, and you can swap out the assets or build on top of this to create your own game. Nothing inherently wrong with doing this, but just blindly copying the Lyra template results in your game feeling like every other game that does the same, and it's not like Lyra is the best feeling game to begin with. Considering that nearly all NFT games I've played are devoid of a player base, you're better off playing Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, which is a 19 year old game that is nothing more than a multiplayer mod for Half-Life 2. It has 51 times more players online at 9am on a Saturday than My Pet Hooligan has ever had, and you can run it on any PC made in the last decade. Also, you can mod it to add custom player models for free. 
In conclusion, My Pet Hooligan is an attempt to turn an NFT collection into a multimedia franchise, and this game is their first product. It's a bare-bones, unoptimized game with a near-zero player base, and I don't personally see any gamer ever being interested in this unless they're bag-holding an $800 picture of a rabbit. Have you ever said, I wish I owned and could sell my in-game assets? Well, now you can. How many times did your mom say something like, if you could only get paid for playing games, you'd be a millionaire? Now you can. Hell of a tagline, but those are the first words that you'll see when visiting the homepage of the developer's Play of Three Old Games. Inspired by gamers and funded by morons, Nexus is just one of the many games developed by these guys. None of these other games have been released yet, but they've got their hopes set high because they're selling nodes for 2250 bucks a piece. My god. Owners of these magical nodes will receive three old coins, which are worth a staggering six ten thousandth of a cent. With marketing materials like this, how bad can Nexus be? Welcome to the future of gaming. I'm Invincible, and this is the Playable Games Weekly Update. Nexus is live, and we were first on Epic Games. The competition winners have been announced, and we can report our first launch as a game publisher has been a huge success. Yo, it's the top A here. Why A? Because I'm at the top of the game. I'm seven letters ahead of the top G. Smash that like button and share this shit. Well, bad enough that there are, as expected, zero players online. Nexus is a third-person shooter MOBA, which means it's 5v5 time, baby. Too bad that we can only find 9 players, all of which were viewers of my livestream who were brave enough to risk their computer's integrity and download the game. Despite the unbalanced teams, the game begins. Similar to every other MOBA, you can buy items and upgrade your character with gold earned in each match. There doesn't appear to be different heroes to choose from, though, so you all play as the same character. Instead, your class is defined by the weapons and abilities that you purchase throughout the game. Once again, this is yet another Lyra clone, except it doesn't even look like they replaced the default animations. The goal is to destroy the enemy's base, which I guess is probably called the Nexus. I don't know. Computer-controlled battle droids proceed down the three lanes of the map every minute, and killing them gives you gold that you can spend on upgrades. They have brain-dead AI and will completely ignore you about 50% of the time. You've also got jungle camps, but there's only one model, which is a spider scaled with varying proportions. They're way too strong to kill by yourself, though, so I guess there's not supposed to be a jungler role in this game. The map is way too large for only 10 players, and you spend as much time walking around as you do engaging in combat. The gunplay feels like trash, since the recoil is so powerful that just one shot causes you to aim at the sky. However, pulling down on the mouse ever so slightly while shooting will completely negate the recoil. I guess the game doesn't look half bad, although it's nothing groundbreaking. This could either be 100% Unreal Marketplace assets, or it could be completely original. Either way, it's as generic as you can get, offering nothing to make it stand out from any other vaguely futuristic shooter game on the market. At least it runs at 60 FPS, but that's a pretty low bar to aim for. We didn't even manage to finish a single game. After a bit over 10 minutes running around shooting at each other, we agreed that this was so boring we didn't even want to bother finishing the game. It's a shame, because I like to imagine that the developers poured their heart and soul into this game, but that's kind of hard to believe when they've got four other games in the pipeline. Not including the inaccessible but ambiguously named upcoming Metaverse listed on their website. While this may be one of the more unique and intriguing crypto games I've ever played, it still fails to impress. The market of online shooter games is already so saturated that there is little to no room for any competition right now. Games with highly experienced developer teams and millions of dollars in funding still end up shutting down just months after release. What's going to cause a crypto-focused asset flip Paragon clone to garner any sort of traction? Nothing. While browsing the Epic Game Store in search of some innovative and groundbreaking crypto games, I stumbled upon this newly released gem on the front page. This must have been hand-selected by the Epic Kingpin Timothy D. Sweeney in his attempts to topple the Titan. Ten bucks? Eh, whatever. It's refundable, so I'll give it a try. I think the... I don't know. What happens if you play a game that's inappro inappropriate on YouTube livestream? Do you get in trouble? How many viewers do I have? I have 62 viewers. Alright, that's... Nobody's watching. We can do this. Oh my goodness. Why am I getting all these friend requests all at once? 
This is a VR game? Steam VR? Where did I find this game? It was on the front page of the Epic Game Store as soon as I opened it. It is only rated M after all. Bazingas! Time to search for that hidden treasure of the giant ass. <laughs> Epic laid off 800 staff so they could secure the exclusive rights to the treasure of the giant ass. <laughs> oh my god. HA! Um. Yeah! What the? What? Dude, her gazangas are trying to leap off the screen and fly away. What are these controls? <laughs> these are <laughs> insane. You can like, you can double jump and uh, activate the lever and uh, this is amazing. What's the refund time limit on the Epic Game Store, guys? Can I beat this before the refund happens? <laughs> What? What? Uh, so we gotta jump over this this time. <laughs> Ooh, that was crazy. Shoom. These cameras, someone just learned how to do uh, cinematic panning in Unreal. Jeez. Get that, and then we rotate, and then we jump backwards. Hey, it's just like Arabian Nights with the pole climbing. Except with bigger breasts. Whoa. Um, can we go over here? Oh, 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 okay, okay. And then, uh, we jump around. Oh, no, oh, 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 whoa, oh, you died. Oh, boy. Oh, okay, yep, that's, that's, uh, it's exposed breasts. Oh, you saw that. Um, you're seeing that right now. Let's, uh, stretch this a little bigger. Oh, yep, that's full. Okay, this is definitely an adult's game. Thank God I put this sensor up. I might not even be able to play it. I don't even think I can play this anymore because of how she's changed her outfit now. And it is so revealing that it covers nothing at all. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next attempt to enjoy a crypto game. And thanks to all of the generous channel members for your support. I'm John, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.